The SE-5A was an aircraft designed by the Royal Aircraft Factory, equipped with a powerful 200 horsepower Hispano Souza engine. The SE-5 had an impressive top speed and a very good climb rate on top of that. The aircraft proved to be a very stable gun platform as well, with one Vickers 303 machine gun and one overwing Lewis gun. The SE-5 first saw action in June 1917. It was used to engage enemy scouts, bombers, and balloons. Occasionally, it was assigned to ground attack roles utilizing the 20-pound Cooper bombs. About 5,000 of these machines were built throughout the war, and the SE-5 was still in production by war's end. This resulted in lots of British aces flying this aircraft, giving it the nickname Ace Maker. Back here and today we'll be taking a look at the latest aircraft in the Flying Circus lineup and that is, as you can see, the SE-5. The SE-5 is by far one of my favorite aircraft of the First World War and a lot of that has to do with, well, just its aesthetic. I think it looks rather nice. Uh, a lot of people think it's pretty ugly with the uh, doghouse type nose, but I think that kind of adds to its charm if I'm being honest. And as you can see, they have done a wonderful job uh, remastering this aircraft for Flying Circus. I gotta say, it looks very good, especially the cockpit, you can really tell. And speaking of the cockpit, let's go ahead and hop right in there. Now as you can see, our cockpit is fairly well modeled and detailed. Looks really good, it definitely is a vast improvement from Rise of Flight. So, let's go ahead, oh, oh boy, no, 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 <laughs> don't want to start yet. We'll just do a quick little walkthrough of the, the cockpit. That there is just a radiator. We have our fuel mixture right here. We'll go ahead and set that to full rich for takeoff. Our throttle is this one right here. We have an oil temperature, magnetos. We have a compass down there. Air speed indicator, RPM, and uh, our altimeter. Whoa! Hold your horses there. Our altimeter's down there in the corner. Kind of difficult to see. And we also have an extra magazine for our Lewis machine gun. We should also have another magazine somewhere else, I think. I don't know if it's just stuffed under the seat. I thought there were three magazines for it, but Trek RR is not liking that movement. So we'll go ahead and stop with that. We'll let it be. All right, so y'all know how this works. We're going to go ahead and take off, do a quick little circuit, and attempt to land this aircraft uh, without damaging it. So let's go ahead and start increasing throttle. And we are away. Takeoff does not take long at all in this plane. Probably take off. Yeah, go ahead and rotate fairly shortly. Our yeah, tail is already up and we're up. Easy peasy. If I'm being honest, it's definitely one of the easier British planes to fly. Uh, the Entente powers always seem to have more difficult aircraft to fly than their German counterparts. But I think this, the SE-5 definitely uh, is a more pilot-friendly plane in the lineup, especially compared to the Sopwith Camel. So we'll go ahead and do a quick circuit. As you can see, this aircraft is fast. We're already approaching 100 miles per hour, and we are just passing that rather quickly going up to 110 here just in level flight not even in a dive you can really put on the coals in a dive this plane is very fast for its time all right so we can go ahead and loop around i'm going to have a lot of airspeed to kill off yep we're at 120 miles per hour let's go ahead and swing around here and hopefully we can land without damaging this beautiful machine but uh, that is definitely going to be <laughs> a challenge for me Let's say that landings are not my strong suit takeoffs are easy landings uh all right so let's go ahead and come in for final start throttling back now Don't want to land with too much speed here. All right, go ahead and start coming in now. As you can see, we killed off lots of airspeed in that that dive or that turn. Excuse me. Already going just a measly 
70 miles per hour. Now let's try to avoid those oil tanks. And let's go ahead and throttle up so we don't actually uh, land too short. Oh, this looks like we're going to just land over here. Alright, and it looks like we actually landed. We landed a little short from where I wanted, but hey, at least I didn't tear up my plane. That's <laughs> that's pretty good if, if I'm saying, if I do say so myself. Alright, and we can go ahead and throttle down. And our skid's hopefully digging into the dirt down there. Looks like there's only two trail marks. Which probably should be three from the skid, but... Anywho, alright, and that is that. Let's go ahead and shut off our engine. One thing I wanted to show y'all, the SE5 is kind of special in this regard. It is the one, one of the few World War Air... Oh my god, I can't speak today. It is one of the few World War One aircraft that actually has an adjustable stabilizer. As you can see, I am just moving my stabilizer up and down. So that definitely helps with trimming your airplane out in long flights over to the the front lines, to the trenches. So uh, definitely a nifty feature of the SE5. All right, so we'll go ahead and cut here, and I'll get this bird into a combat scenario against some albatrosses and uh, probably D7s, we'll see. And uh, we'll see how she stacks up. I'll see you guys momentarily. So here's the situation. There are four Fokker D7s and four Albatrosses, or three and three, I'm sorry. And there are two other SE5s, so three SE5s including me, and we're gonna engage these guys. I'm gonna go for the Albatrosses first, mostly because those are the new airplanes released, and I wanna see how the SE5 stacks up. So I started us off with an altitude advantage, just so we can get a picture of this thing in a dive. Let's go ahead and make sure a mixture is hunky-dory here we can go ahead and actually turn off the HUD for this this fight. Alright, so we are closing in on a group of albatrosses. And hopefully we can get a nice pass here. Uh, looks like I overshot one Frando. Flipped his wings, I think. Come back around. Whee! Alright, get on a six, hopefully. Yep, looks like we've landed right on a six. We can tear into him now. Oh yeah, definitely got some good shots into him there. Ripped into his wing. Uh, SC5 is not a good turn fighter, but this albatross, I think I already stopped his engine. Is his engine dead? I really can't tell. Well, let's let's make sure, I suppose. No, his engine is certainly not dead, but definitely has quite a few holes in him, and it looks like he has a fuel leak. Let's go ahead and finish him off, maybe. Make sure my six is clear from any uh, dastardly hunts, right? Looks like another SE5 is going in to finish off my kill. Oh, it looks like not. It looks like he's going to play kind of nice. Let's... Oh, that's an SE5 I almost <laughs> rammed. All right, let's get a good deflection shot. Hopefully, maybe I got something right in his engine. Who knows? All right, let's go ahead and go in for the climb and swoop down. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Blends in very nicely with the terrain. Who knows if I actually ended up getting anything there. Oh, there he is. As you can see, we are fairly good at climbing away and diving. Looks like he's trying desperately to shake us, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Try to stick onto his six like... Oh, there we go. Looks like I hit his radiator or something. That does not look like a good leak. See if he's going down. I don't know if he'll actually be going down. Probably will be soon though. I don't think his engine can sustain that. Let's see who else is about. Okay. Let's, let's say, speaking of radiators, 
think my engine might be overheating just a smidge. Oh, he's getting on our six. Well, we can't have that. Let's turn around. Hopefully he doesn't shoot us too badly. Oh, he's turning. Definitely tore into him there, and yeah, his engine's producing black smoke. He's done for. Let's go ahead and... Seemed like only uh, one machine gun was firing there. Oh, is he trying to ram me? Excuse you, my friend. All right, we'll go for these aircraft over here. Let's head towards this fur ball. He is done. There's no way he's gonna live. Anything, I, yep, there we go. His engine just went kaput. All right, we have gunfire out over yonder, so let's go ahead and head that way. It looks like he's gonna try to put that albatross down. That's what I would be doing in this situation. And it looks like R6 is clean, so that is one albatross down. Let's see, let's try our luck against uh, these guys up here. All right, we are closing very quickly on the six of this albatross. It looks like he's just kind of doing zigzag maneuvers. I don't, I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he forgot there's a war going on. Uh, I have my two SE5 friends up high up there, and they let me go down to engage. It looks like we also have two more albatrosses over yonder, so uh, hopefully they don't gang up on me. That would be very bad. But there are nice open fields in this area, so plenty of places to put this bird down. All right, so let's go ahead and throttle back before we actually overshoot this albatross. Hopefully I can kind of take it out in one pass. You really want to go for the kill box. That's the pilot and the engine. Obviously, that's easier said than done. All right, let's go ahead and throttle back and let them swing back around for us. Just try to stick onto a six. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, I can't go that slow. All right, let's go ahead and throttle up. Let's see here. Yeah, just cross my sight, buddy. That's all I want. All right, guns are jammed. Let's go ahead and uh, reload. Let's see, <laughs> terrible time, terrible time to reload. Let's go, let's get that Lewis gun operational, please. All right. And that was much easier in game than it would have been in real life. In real life, I mean, I can't imagine trying to stand up and reload that uh, in flight. All right, you're done for now, my friend. Both machine guns operational. There we go. That was a good hit. Engine, looks like another hit in the radiator. That was another good one too. Another good pass. I think that is another albatross down for the count. You could probably leave him be and he'll go down on his own, but uh, let's go ahead and finish him off now. I am a cruel, cruel SC5 pilot. Unless I see his engine go kaput, then uh, looks like it's still just plucking away. <laughs> Get him in the wingtip. Actually, you know what? I'll let him be. Let's go and try to find those Fokker D7s, maybe. I think that would be an interesting, yep, there they are. Well, looks like he's turning that way, so might as well go ahead and see. I'm surprised that albatross is still flying. It's a fairly sturdy bird. Well, we'll come right up on a six, one more pass, and then we'll go engage those Fokker. That was pretty good. No way he's surviving that. Really? Is he really going to though? <laughs> I feel like I have just riddled this albatross with bullets. like another machine gun is down. Let's go ahead and reload maybe. 
That thing has to be in terrible shape. Alright, well, I think I actually might be out of ammo yet. Looks like I actually am out of ammo, but that is two albatrosses down. That one's going to go down eventually. So, that is just a little bit of combat in the SE-5A. Oh, I hope you all enjoyed this video of me showcasing the SE-5A. As always, thank you all for watching. This is Wolfpack345, signing off, and I'll see you guys on the next one.